All right, so which brings me to two options that is really cool about your instrument. You have to explain one option to me because I don't understand it. You can do two adjustments like on the fly. You can adjust the bridge height with the Phillips screwdriver on the back, two screws. You can make it higher and lower, which I haven't done yet. The stock height, by the way, is great. I haven't changed anything, but honestly, you're gonna help me out with this. It came with this Allen wrench. I'm like, what is this? And I noticed that you can stick it up here and adjust what? Because I said it's supposed to adjust the precision of the markings, these dots. Could you please no, explain no. it to me? No, what, what that is, uh, uh, adjust the truss rod, okay? okay. okay truss rod see. is a metal rod that goes the length of the, of the neck. Uh, and traditional bowed instruments, cellos and violins and so on, don't have that. Even basses don't have that. But it's a huge advantage. Because what you can do with that is to control the camber of the neck, the amount of relief in the fingerboard. You know, fingerboards are not straight. They have end to end, they have a slight curvature to them. And in fact, for bowed instruments, we follow the, the, that tradition closely on the way they fingerboards are made on bowed instruments. And you have more curve on the low strings and less curve on the high strings that's called relief how much relief is in the fingerboard okay so we're able to adjust that uh with that truss rod uh which changes the amount of curve that you have in the fingerboard um so, so what you, if you were to hold your finger down on the string at the just next to the nut and all the way at the at the uh end of the fingerboard so if you hold your finger down there and then hold it at the end of the fingerboard, uh, but you have to do them both at once. It's a little tricky. You know, if you hold both like ends, then you can see how much clearance there is under the string in the middle. You see there is some clearance, right? Yes, there is. And check out the low string and you'll see it has a lot more clearance. Yes, it does. That's a tradition in, in, in uh, bowed instruments that is, you know, without question uh, of great value that was developed by the great masters. So, you know, one of the things that happens is that seasonally the relief changes when you have an ebony fingerboard. That's another big advantage of the rich light. Mm -hmm. It's more stable, okay? Okay. But if you have an ebony fingerboard, it's going to tend to change from summer. It will get flatter, less relief. And then in the winter when it gets very dry and the wood dries out, it gets more relief. So. That's an undesirable reality of, of working with ebony, but it's, you know, still with many ebony instruments out there. And even so, the, the neck can change a little over time. So with that truss rod, you're able to maintain optimal uh, playability without having to take it to your luthier and have him dress the fingerboard. So I, so if I get this correct, you, you place this in and you rotate it. And what, it, what does it do to the relief? <laughs> You can add relief or reduce relief. Okay, on the fly. Changes the amount of relief, yes. That's cool. I mean, and this stuff is, this is standard with guitars and bass guitars and all that whole that. tradition. But it hasn't been a tradition in the bowed instrument field. No. But it's a big advantage. Also, you got to understand that our neck is a lot longer than you have on a traditional cello, right? Uh, in that the, the neck itself uh, hits, you know, is connected to the body Mm -hmm. uh, so that it, it is less in need of a truss rod. When you have a really long uh, neck like that, it's important to be able to control the relief more so than with a traditional cello. I discovered these are Schaller's, and okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they're Schaller M6s, uh, okay. your, your machine heads. Do you, can you can deny or confirm that? I don't remember the model designation, but they're Schaller's, and um, Schaller makes a great tuner. You know, traditional cello has friction tuners, which to me, you know, it's Stone Age technology, really. Uh, this, <laughs> these tuners here will keep you 
much easier to tune up and stay in tune. That's an advantage of the electric for sure. So the question is this though, because you know I will be doing a comparison of this one and the Yamaha SVC. And the Yamaha uses, by the way, anyone watching this, I've done my research, the Yamaha uses just Chinese machine heads, okay? Just keep it real. They're not made in Japan. You can buy those off AliExpress right now. Now these are here, these are pricey, these are nice, these are made in Germany, say it so, the Schullers. But why did you option for these instead of the base? machine head people say it's you know it's they feel that it's it could break it's not strong enough to hold the guitar I mean excuse me the um the cello strings these are just like guitar tuners so why did you option for those instead of the machine heads that for bass the bass tuners are uh, unnecessary oversized and um, not as much fun to uh, to look at or to use uh, so um, we don't have any problem with people breaking these tuners. Uh, we do sometimes have a little bit of problem on the bass because if we, for example, on our uh, uprights, we use tuners that were originally designed for bass guitar, okay? But the tension on the bass, upright bass strings can be way higher than the bass guitar, and we have had some issues there with uh, dependability but not much but uh the, those tuners have worked for the cello they just seem to work flawlessly we're very happy with them 